Today on voiding warranties, I'm going to do something I promised a while back. I'm actually going to explain why water injection, why no intercooler, and why that matters to me and should matter to you. All right, so why water injection? Well, it's a complex question with some complex answers, but let me first tell you where I got a lot of my information from. So back in the 1940s, we had, uh, we had a little thing called World War II going on, and we needed fighter aircraft to provide air superiority. And that's great and all, but we needed them to go at higher altitudes than they'd ever gone before for this task. So we started to make higher compression airplane engines. Now these higher compression airplane engines, they also needed uh, superchargers or turbochargers to make up the difference between sea level air, which is really dense, and high altitude air, which is not. But you ended up with a problem. You see, at high altitude with a high compression engine, everything's great. You get all the power that you need for high altitude combat. But you take that same airplane down to sea level where the air isn't that dense, and you start getting detonation. You see, with the timing advance and the high compression, you end up with the perfect situation for detonation. And they had to find something to do about that. Now, gas wasn't as good then as it is now, and they were also running air-cooled engines, which made the problem worse. So they turned to water injection as their solution. And NACA was the Allies' answer. They did a whole bunch of scientific studies on detonation and water injection, valve cooling, that sort of stuff. And the information is now publicly available. So that's what I used to base a lot of my current developments on. So this is not new stuff. It dates back to fighter planes in World War II. Now what does this actually mean to you? Well, the problems that they had high compression engines with turbochargers or superchargers and not high enough octane fuel to do it all without detonation, those are the same problems we have today as, you know, tuners. So before I get into why water injection, let's talk about an intercooler and what it actually does. Now, an intercooler is a wonderful device that transfers heat from the charge air coming out of the compressor at 250, 300, maybe even more if you're running a lot of boost degrees, and it cools it down. Now, when it cools it down, it takes it, the air and it makes it more dense. Now, the engine can only handle whatever volume of air it can handle at a given RPM. So you compress the air so it can handle more massive air, same volume. The intercooler cools the air so you can handle even more massive air at the same volume. But where does detonation come into all this? Well, detonation is a fundamental limit between several things, and they're all kind of changing in an engine. Let's just assume some of them are static. All right, number one. This is at a specific timing, because timing affects whether or not detonation is happening. Number two, it's at a specific RPM, because speed of the engine, the speed of the flame front, everything affects detonation. And finally, it's at a specific AFR, because you go leaner or richer and you can affect detonation, as the graph I'm going to show somewhere around here will show you. So with a specific timing, specific AFR, at a specific RPM, detonation will happen at a specific pressure. Okay? I didn't say anything about temperature. Because temperature really doesn't affect detonation. You can have a hotter fuel air mixture or a colder fuel air mixture. That'll affect density. It'll affect ultimate power. But it doesn't affect the pressure at which detonation happens. And when I say detonation, I, I'm not talking about, you know, a little pinging sound. Because that's what you hear, that's the symptom. What I'm talking about is an actual supersonic explosion happening in your engine. Now the reason detonation is bad is it, it breaks up the boundary layer that's coating your, your cylinder walls, your piston, your head everything. And that tiny little layer of air is enough to insulate most of the heat of combustion so you don't end up melting holes in your piston, for example. 
when detonation happens, it, it's a bang that rings throughout your piston, breaks up this boundary layer, and puts the heat of combustion against the actual cylinder walls, the piston, the head, everything. Which is why when you have engines that detonate over and over again, they start melting in places. Specifically where the detonation's happening. So detonation is bad, we understand that. Detonation happens at a specific pressure. Well, an intercooler can make the air more dense, so you can make more power when you get to this pressure, but you can never get past it. It never affects the octane of the gas. You can pull timing, that's a great option, but eventually you'll start to hit other limitations, like how much heat your exhaust can handle, how much heat your valves can handle. You'll start to load up all sorts of things with heat that you don't want, and you'll also lose a lot of efficiency, a lot of power out your tailpipe. It's not a good option either. But what about water injection? Well, let's ignore the fact that water injection cools the air. Just ignore that completely. Let's ignore the fact that water injection cools the engine. Just pretend that doesn't exist for a moment. Water injection chemically changes the combustion process. The water interacts with the fuel as it's burning, chemically. And this changes the octane of the entire process. All right, so let's talk about what water actually does. In the NACA study, they ran a single timing. And then they ran their engine up at different loads at different AFRs until they hit detonation at each load. And they came up with a baseline of pressures that represent where the engine detonates. Now, this was also at one specific RPM. And then they took the same engine, same setup, and they added 20% water to fuel by mass. And they went 40% water to fuel by mass. Now, they used a water methanol mix, but that's not that important because in another one of their studies, they showed that up to about 20%, 25%, somewhere in that range, it doesn't matter whether it's water or water methanol. They both have comparable anti-detonation properties. All right, so what did the water injection actually do? Well, just 20% water methanol injection moved the curve from down here to up here. Increased that to 40%, and they only actually got one point where they were able to create detonation. And this also was negating some of the cooling effects of the water because they heated the valves to keep valve temperature constant. They wanted to see the detonation effects. They did another study with cooled valves. That's also interesting, but not the point yet. All right, so I've covered what water injection can do as an anti-detonation aid, but it also cools the air. In fact, it cools it so well, you don't really need an intercooler when you're injecting the right amount of water. The highest temperatures I've seen under eight pounds of boost have been right at 130 degrees. I've had it spike a little higher, but not when I'm actively in boost. I think that's just when I lift off the throttle and I start sucking a little bit of coal or a little bit of hot engine air in. That's life. Now this isn't all that water injection actually does because I'm running pre-turbo water injection. And that's important too because of something called wet compression. Now wet compression is one of those marketing kind of terms that they use, especially for uh, gas turbine generation plants. But it's based on an actual concept. So your turbocharger, for example, it takes 70, 75 degree air, it compresses it to 6, 8, 14 pounds, and out it pops at over 200 degrees. And that's pretty darn hot. And the heat makes the air less dense, which makes it harder to compress all the way through the turbocharger. So what if you could take the heat out in the middle of when the turbocharger is compressing it? So the air comes out at 120 degrees. Well, then some magic happens because the air is more dense going through the turbocharger. The turbocharger has to fight the hot air less, takes less power. Not only will it spool faster, it'll also take less exhaust pressure to maintain boost pressure. I mean, these are great things, but it only works 
if you inject the water into the throat of your turbo, into the inlet. Because once the turbo has generated all that heat and compressed all that air, it, it doesn't really help the efficiency much. So you have to spray before the turbo. Also, if you inject water before the intercooler, which before the turbo is definitely before the intercooler, the water has a chance of both condensing in the intercooler, which it will, and falling out due to the curves and turns and bends to get there, to get through the intercooler and back. And then you can end up with pools of water that'll slug into your engine when you open the throttle. That can lead to tuning problems. But why would I ditch the intercooler completely? Well, like I said before, it's not cooling the air much. Intercooler efficiency is based on a differential temperature between the air that's going through it and the outside air that's going across it. So if you have 130 degree air passing through it and 75 degree air passing over it, that's a little bit of cooling. And you might get a 5, 10 degree change in the outlet temperature, which is insignificant at that point. But if you have 250 degree air coming out of your turbocharger into the intercooler, man, that would drop that down to 130-ish. Yeah. So water injection with an intercooler, the intercooler doesn't do much. But hey, it actually gets even worse for the intercooler. Let me tell you why. The intercooler and the associated piping, that's all volume, right? That's all space that you have to fill up with pressurized air when you spool your turbo. Imagine that you had a huge cave, a huge cavernous cave that's your intercooler and associated piping. It'll make sense here in a second, trust me. And you start putting one PSI air into that. How long is it going to take to fill that entire cavern up to one PSI? A long time, right? Now what if your engine's on the other side of this cavern? When will it actually start seeing that one PSI air? A long time, right? And then it goes through the engine, then it comes back the other side, one PSI higher, to drive the turbocharger. Well, then the turbocharger can make two PSI air, and then rinse, repeat, over and over again. And this is actually how your turbo spools. The turbo can't get more energy until the extra pressure makes its way through the engine. So until that whole cycle has completed itself, you don't get another iteration, another increase in pressure. So the smaller the intercooler and related piping, the faster your turbo can actually spool because the faster the turbocharger sees any increase in pressure that it creates. So because of that, an intercooler just it's just an added appendage with a water injection build like this. It doesn't serve any purpose. It's, it's the appendix of turbocharging at that point. So I don't have one. Now, an appendix actually does have some uses, and an intercooler in this case would, if nothing else than a safety feature, it would prevent hot air from hitting my engine all at once, which in most cases could cause detonation and engine destruction, but I have two things going for me to prevent that. Number one, I have intake air temperature downstream of the turbo. So when it starts blowing hot air, my engine retards timing. And I think that above everything else has actually saved me the most. But number two, I have detonation sensing. In fact, I, that's why I've been pursuing ion sensing and everything associated with it. I went with my, old, my own knock control strategy for a while. And this keeps my engine from ever going into detonation and staying there for a long period of time. It'll get mild detonation and then back timing off, everything's fine. So you guys get the general idea. Intercoolers aren't bad, but they're limited use. They cool the air, they do nothing for anti-detonation. And if you're already cooling the air, why have them in the first place? They just add volume, add spool time. Now, if you disagree with my conclusions, great. Post your own data, post your own material. I'd love to hear your disagreement and leave it in the comments below. So if you like this video, click like. If you want to see more like it, click subscribe. And above all, keep on voiding warranties.